Hi, um, here we are back at it again. This is um, a uh, video on guide numbers and a few other uh, flash topics. These are uh, basically very important items to know. Um, so let's get into it. Probably one of the most important laws to uh, know or one of the most important concepts to know, especially in dealing with flash photography, is the inverse square law of light. Um, what this basically means is, is if you shine a light on a subject, um, if you double the distance between the light and the subject, you will get one quarter of the light. This is due to the fact that the light is propagated and expands over a larger area. So what that basically means is, is if you take a subject that is a foot away um, and illuminate it with a flash, if you go to two feet, it will only get a quarter of the light that it did at one foot. This is very important to know. Another thing to know, if you want to half the light, uh, you move the uh, distance, you multiply the distance times 1.4. 1.4 is a very important number. Uh, 1.4 is half, and uh, you know doubling it, or times 2, is uh, taking it to a quarter. So that's very important to know. Another very important concept uh, to keep firmly embedded in your mind is when you're doing bounce flash photography, when you're bouncing off the ceiling or something of that nature, uh, the distance to the subject is not uh, the distance from the flash to the subject. It's the distance from the bounce surface to the subject. And um, so you measure from the flash to the surface, like let's say it's the ceiling, and then from the ceiling to the subject. That would be your uh, flash to subject distance. Also, if you have a flash mounted off camera, you do not measure the distance from the camera to the subject. You measure the distance from the flash to the subject. And please keep in mind that if you're using filters, that you have to compensate for the amount of light that is lost um, by the filter. And also, if you're uh, bouncing off a, um, a surface that is not as reflective as it should be or, or as you want it to be, perhaps, that you also have to compensate for that. So remember that about calculating the real distance of um, the flash. These topics are so important, they're worth repeating. So if you take your flash and double the distance of the flash between the flash and the subject, double that distance, you're going to get a quarter of the light. If you take the distance between the flash and the subject and multiply it times 1.4, your subject is going to receive one half of the light. Remember, if your guide or if your guide number on your flash is expressed in feet, and or it's in meters, uh, what you do is you multiply the meters times 3.28. If you want to convert a guide number that is expressed in feet, uh, what you do is you uh, multiply the feet times 0.328 to receive the meter equivalent. Those are important concepts. Boring, but important. So what is a guide number? A guide number is basically a number, usually determined at um, ISO 100, um, a number indicating the output of the flash required to do a normal exposure. You can either take the guide number from the manufacturer or determine your own. A guide number is calculated by taking uh, the f-stop and that is, you, you do some sample exposures until you get one you like. You take the f-stop and multiply it times the flash to subject distance, and that is going to determine your guide number. If you want to determine, if you have a guide number that you agree with, and if you want to um, determine your f-stop, you take the guide number and divide it by the flash to subject distance, and that will give you the f-stop that you should use. Uh, the flash to subject distance can also be uh, determined by taking the guide number and dividing it by the f-stop. Guide numbers are basically a starting point. If you're shooting through an umbrella or something of this nature, you, you know, your guide number is going to be way off because you're going to have the light 
loss by shooting through the umbrella. If you're doing uh, bounce and there's light loss to the reflection, or if you're putting filters on, then what you have to do is you have to um, uh, basically, um, you know, compensate for these factors. Um, if you double the ISO, then you can multiply your guide number by uh, 1.4. So if, you, if you're um, using a guide number that's calculated at ISO 100 and you go to ISO um, uh, 200 and like let's say that the uh, guide number is uh, 100, your new guide number is going to be 140. If you quadruple your ISO, like let's say go to ISO 400, then you can double your guide number. So your original guide number of 100 at ISO 100, if you uh, quadruple uh, your ISO to 400, then your guide number becomes 200. The nice thing about it is with the uh, new uh, ability to review your images right after, it makes um, flash photography uh, infinitely more easy. Um, but remember, guide numbers are just a starting point. What you do is you place your flashes and so on and uh, start with your guide number and start experimenting in your camera. And remember, too, that if you have multiple flashes and they spill onto each other, uh, you also have to uh, decrease your exposure because the flashes then become additive. Uh, these are very important tools and very important to know. But remember, your guide number is just a starting point. So I would write down those three formulas as above. Guide number equals f-stop times flash to subject distance. And f-stop equals guide number divided by flash to subject distance. And flash to subject distance equals guide number divided by f-stop. And carry them in your camera bag because they are very, very important to know. The uh, last topic we're going to cover on this video is the relationship between shutter speed, aperture, and aperture in flash photography. Uh, the electronic flash, the duration of electronic flash, depending upon the power setting on the flash, can be down to one twenty thousandths of a second. It's very, very brief. And when you take the uh, shutter speed, um, which is in many cases less than, in most cases, is uh, less than a 500th of a second uh, for a shutter sync speed, or for a flash sync speed, uh, your flash only occurs for a very brief instant um, within that shutter speed. So basically what happens is your aperture is what controls uh, the flash portion of the exposure. Uh, the length of the shutter speed allows the uh, portions which are not illuminated by the flash um, to burn in or partially illuminated by the flash to uh, further burn in. So basically what you're going to see is your flash is going to be controlled by your aperture and your shutter speed, the longer it is, will allow more of the background details to burn in. Thank you for watching. Um, I'm going to be coming out with a complete course on flash photography at a very, very nominal fee. Uh, please visit my site at uh, www.fotolink.com. Uh, and thank you very much for watching.